So um, before the break, um, we talk about how to how to, how to uh, write estimate LPCA by the eigen decomposition problems. And uh, so here I reorganized my notation. So basically here we have a, a vector of n curves, and this phi of t is a, is a vector of j basic functions. So then the center curve x of t can be written as uh, c times phi of t. So c will be n by j matrix. And uh, then the covariance function sigma s of t will be just equal to 1 over n ST times ST transpose. So then this is just equal to uh, N transpose, phi transpose S. So this should be T. And C transpose times C phi T. Okay. Oh, so it should be S. This part should be S. Yes. Okay. So the, the LPC WT equal to phi transpose T times B. So B the coefficients to the, for the LPC. So here we want to maximize, we want to uh, solve these eigen decomposition problems, these eigen equations. And we know that uh, this, uh, we have the constraints, the length of WT has to be equal to 1. So if we define a W, capital W in this uh, integral, then the constraints will be B transpose times W times B equal to 1, right? So now uh, let's, uh, let's work on these uh, eigen equations. So this is this this is the eigen equations, right? So now we can plug in the formula for sigma s of t here. Um, so this is the, the formula for sigma s of t, right? So we can plug in sigma s of t, and the w t is the formula. This is the formula for w t. We can plug in here, right? So so we can just plug in this, and then because in this integral. This is the integral with back to t, right? So there's nothing related to s. So therefore, we can put this is a constant. This is a function of s. We can put it outside the integral. And we, this is a constant matrix, c transpose c. We can also put it outside the integral. So, so then the integral will just be integral of phi t times phi t transpose dt times b. b is a constant, so we can also take out the integral, right? So then this integral will just be w, right? The, the matrix W. So, so uh, we have here, and also because this equation will hold for any given time s, right? It always holds for any given time s. So this uh, phi t s basically is the vector with the basis coefficients, basis functions. So in other words, uh, this function this left side, if you look at this as the, the coefficients to the basis functions phi of s, this b is a, at the coefficient to the phi of s. So if these two always equal to each other, then the coefficients also should always to each, equal to each other. Therefore, these coefficients 1 over n c transpose c times W times B should be always equal to rho times B, okay? Because this is hold for any vector of basis functions, okay? So this is become this, and then this will become a, looks like an eigen equation, right? In the matrix form, okay? So this is a big matrix times the vector B equal to rho times B, right? Yes. Okay, so the rule will be look like a, a eigen value, right? The only problem here is that we have the constraints on the B. So the B transpose times WB equal to 1. Recall that for the regular eigen decomposition problem, it's just the eigen vector B transpose times B equal to 1, right? So we have extra W matrix. Therefore, we need to do a small tricks here. So basically, we will define the uh, W one half times B equal to a new vector um, eta, and then this will become a regular eigen decomposition problems. And then we can find the find the the B based on the eigen um, decomposition. Okay. So 
uh, this is a uh, uh, so this is this is uh, how we get the uh, FPC. Any questions here? Is this clear? Okay. So so now let's uh, uh, going back to the uh, Canadian weather data and uh, so here uh, before I show you the the, the the LPCA for the MedFly data and this is the data to show you the when we do the LPCA on the Canadian temperature data basically is the curve the 35 temperature curve for 35 Canadian cities and you can see here so the 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 black one is the first LPC and you can see here the first LPC is uh, positive in the whole year right with a lower weight around the summer and a higher weight in the winter right so therefore we can interpret the first LPC score as the weighted average of the temperature right and the second FPC, which is the red curve, so this red curve is uh, ne positive in the winter and negative in the summer, right? So in other words, we can reinterpret FPC2 as the change of the temperature between the winter and the summer, okay? The third FPC is this blue curve. You can see this blue curve is positive in the spring and a negative in the fall, right? So in other words, the LPC3 score will can be interpreted, interpreted as the change between the temperature in the fall and the spring. And the FPC4 will be this blue curve. This is a... This is a... a let me see. For the blue curve, it is positive in the summer, negative in the spring and fall, and positive again in the winter. So I will interpret this as the change of temperature between summer and winter compared to the spring and the fall. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So, so this part is, I think this is wrong. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so here you can see that, uh, like, uh, basically, this is give you the message that uh, for first LPC, it's always positive, right? For the second LPC, it will be positive in one part and negative in other part. And for the third LPC, it will be cross zero two times. And for the third, fourth LPC, it will cross zero in three times, okay? This is actually very commonly found in many other applications as well. I don't know why, but this is uh, just to be a phenomenon we find. Okay, so then we can calculate the, uh, the um, cumulative variance is planned for the data. And uh, so here, um, this is to show you uh, the vertical line. This vertical line is uh, 90%. And the, this vertical line is a 99%. You can see here for the temperature data, if we were just using three FPCs, it will be over 99%. Okay? Yes. If you using two LPCs, it will be over 95%. Can I explain the over 95% of the variations? Okay, so uh, very commonly we use the two um, to the FPC is to for the dimension reduction, right? So remember, this is for the uh, 35 temperature curve, right? So originally, we have well, each curve, we have 30, 365 time point. And now we are able to project just the two FPC scores. And so we can, use, using the X axis as the first FPC score, and the y axis as the second LPC score. So then each city will be projected to two dimensional data point. Right? Okay.
So you can see um, now after we doing this dimension reduction, we can do many interesting things. For example, we can do in the clustering, right? And we can find out uh, which city has a similar temperature trend over the year. For example, if you look at uh, this uh, this data, you will see that uh, like uh, uh, Resolute has the highest uh, FPC score. Uh, second FPC score. And uh, Winnipeg and Dawson has the most negative second LPC score, right? So remember, the second LPC represents the change of temperature between the summer and the winter, right? So it is not a uh, surprised to see uh, the because we know Winnipeg and and, and Winnipeg is has a, is 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 uh, knowing that it has a very cold winter, right? And 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 the hot and, and the warm summer, and for the red loot actually it's uh, it's in the I think it's in the uh, very north of, of, of the in Canada, so it's close to um, uh, North Pole. So therefore, it has very cold uh, winter as well. Okay, and uh, yeah. So another thing I want to mention is that for this LPC score, actually. It doesn't matter, the sign doesn't matter. So if we get a, like a very positive or very negative, basically they are the same, right? Because uh, um, like, uh, so before, when we define the FPCs, um, you can see here for this FPCs, WIT can put a negative there, doesn't matter, right? So therefore, the LPC will not identifiable. It's identifiable identifiable up to a sign, positive or negative sign, right? Okay. So therefore, you should not pay too attention, too much attention on the, on the on the positive or negative of the score. You should look at the absolute value of the scores. Okay. Okay. So um, this is uh, for this. Uh, uh, this is a very interesting. Um, uh, Graph for this LPC uh, LPC analysis. Okay, let's stop here. Um.